hi all good morning thanks for coming and attending this talk today uh, i will we will explain you how program and tester can be productive so in this we will share our experience uh, like me and nancy we are working from last 9 to 10 year on multiple projects so uh, we face a couple of challenges we like what are the things we are doing like what are the principle we follow so that uh, everything will be on the time and we deliver the good product okay so mostly like we will share our experience in this and uh, let me introduce myself uh, i'm anush singla working as a principal software engineer in red hat so mostly i work on the front end technologies and uh, like apart from my work i also share my knowledge and uh, educate to the people on the youtube um Good morning, everyone. I am Nancy Chen. I am Quality Engineering Manager at Red Hat, and I have over 11 years of experience in quality software quality. And as a QE manager, so I'm me and my team. We both are responsible for uh, overseeing the development and implementation of quality control processes, and we make sure that our products uh, reach highest quality and uh, standards. So that's my quick introduction. Now Anuj will going to talk about like. but uh, what we will going to discuss today along with why we choose this topic okay thanks nancy okay so today our agenda is why why did we choose this topic what are the top five conflicts and how do we resolve these problems and collaboration between developer and tester when the developer and tester collaborate with each other and the couple of case study like we follow in our projects and the couple of suggestion from our side and then q and a okay so now why why did we choose this topic like the developer and tester collaboration is very important okay so we need to work together and if if they are working together definitely the productivity will increase and the customer satisfaction will also increase like if we say in 1990 or before the agile the waterfall model was used so in that like developer and tester has very less co uh, collaborations so like i didn't get a chance to work on the waterfall model but one of my friend uh, deepak kol he has shared some experience with me because he has work on that so at that time th like the tester and developer uh, like tester is working in the end and the developer working in the starting so in that like one sir requirement comes so there is one srs document is prepared on that time so one is share with the developer one is share with the tester so there is there, there was very less communication between them and the tester is working on like as per the srs document they working on their use cases but uh, take example like if in the end the tester is testing the bug uh, testing the all the product and some bug critical bugs is found then maybe it it require some in infrastructure change okay so at that time it's it was very difficult to make the changes because tester is already testing in the end and it it will delay the it will delay the productivity or delay the production okay so that that's why like the agile process come and uh, in the agile like everything is on the collaborating and we are working on the sprint like we follow every fourth week uh, we deploy our changes to the production and there are lot of meetings is going on uh, retrospective stand up or grooming meetings so it helps to grow and deliver our, our product on time so before i jump to the uh, top five conflicts i would like to ask quick question to our audience you guys might work with the different development teams or might be like interacted with the qe team and program team so as per your experience what do you think what are the reasons which creates conflicts between programmer and tester anybody in the audience yes yeah right it's totally i totally agree with your answer miscommunication uh, some like pressure on the releasing because like we always have some deadlines where we need to like uh, release our uh, changes to the production so so if that's the reason like miscommunication time constraint pressure so how what do you think like how does this impact teams efficiency and productivity anyone yeah please True, you are right. So I can I can con 
Yeah. So the question is, how does this impact the team's efficiency and productivity? And she said, like, yeah. So we sometimes happens, right? We fix, we found some bug, then we uh, test it, then again, it's kind of a loop, right? And I, I, do you agree? Like, it will create uh, some kind of empowerment where, like, uh, like we feel. Uh, like it like it increased a lot of errors, right? And along with like it also impact the overall job satisfaction, associate morale. Why? Because we have that kind of like because these two teams have conflicts. So um, so and uh, I, this these are the five top causes which like conflicts, which I feel as per my experience working with different teams. So it's not accurate to say like testers and programmers can never become productive or friends. But yeah, there are few challenges, there are few scenarios or situations where the relationship impacted with because of the challenges. So the first one is competing goals. So you know, like uh, when it comes to the programmer. So programmers and testers both have different goals and priorities and as per their job, right? And uh, programmers are mostly focused on delivering and uh, developing the software. And on the other side, tester are mostly work on uh, like testing the finding the bugs and make sure that like the software reach the highest quality. So uh, I will take a quick example of like how this works, like quality versus delivery, bug free versus functionality, uh, functional software. So let's take an example. Um, tester usually test, they try to find bugs as much as possible. And if they are aiming that like we will going to have a bug free software, and uh, but on the other side, programmer really wanted to have like uh, release the things, release the changes on production as quickly as possible. If that's the case, if they found some bug, the tester said like, okay, we have one bug which is related to UI and UX, like f some font or some alignment is good, uh, not good because they're prioritizing the customer satisfaction priority. But when it comes to the programmer, they said like, we can take it that later. Let's work on the quickly release. So here the conflicts arise. So next one is blame game. So that is very common, blame game. Uh, so what it means, let's uh, here I will also give you a real time example about uh, new feature testing. So when it comes to the new work, the new work, like we already have existing system and we are just adding a new feature in the system. So what tester usually do? They pick that chunk and test. So when it comes to the new feature testing, we also need to test the regression part. So regression is nothing but where you're like, you're checking that with this new changes, there is no impact the existing functionality, which is very, very important. And if they found some regression and they reach out to the programmer um, saying that that's a regression, they might argue with, no, that's not, um, it's not the part of, you need to focus on the new feature. Why you are going to the regression? And, and I'm sure this is not because of my change. So that's kind of argument, it's very common. <laughs> so the next, the third one is communication gap. So I like that's a very major point. Communication gaps happen like pr uh, tester found bug, they write the bug, they log the bugs in the different release mechanism. We have Jira, Bugzilla, and sometimes happen like, they not explain each and every details and information. So how this will impact, programmer pick that bug and they're unable to address what's a problem because they're not able to, uh, they're saying like it's not working on my machine, right? But again, uh, very common. So uh, conflict arise because they say tester haven't shared the exact steps, steps to reproduce so that they can work on the solution. So here the again conflict arise when like, they don't know, and due to the la lack of the information, it delays to the uh, resolution. So the one, last one is, uh, the another one is limited interaction. So limited interaction is basically depending on team structure, depending on the uh, project. So there may be the high chances both programmer and tester teams got let very minimum chances to interact. And if they are not interacting, how they will going to understand the end-to-end -end business strategy behind the work they are working on. So they might work on a silo basis. If they are working on a silo mode, so they are high chance they have a minimum opportunity to connect. So again, um, limited detection also create conflicts. Time conflicts. Time conflict, both roles have a totally different priorities and goals, which we need to think. And when it, I told, I already explained, like when it comes to the programmer, they, had, they mostly focus on delivering the things, be on time, and when it comes to 
quality engineer there may be a chance for they ask for like okay we are not ready I'm, we are not uh, confident to give the acknowledgement to release the things and they need extra time so they, they again conflict arise because tester needs more time to release so these are the top five causes like which creates conflict as per my uh, experience and this is very basic scenario you guys can like relate like where developer and tester like tester is saying it's working on my machine and develop no 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 <laughs> it's not working you are you are wrong somewhere and the another uh, image uh, image is saying like okay they're saying giving a bug to the developer and developer is saying no it's not a bug it's a feature it's an improvement so yeah so this is how it works now uh, how we can solve coming through these uh, point a uh, developer i think it will be create a more impact so anuj Yeah, so Nancy has shared like a couple of problems. Uh, there are a lot of problems between developer and tester now. Uh, we will see how we will solve these types of problem. And uh, like, uh, as per me, like developer testers should be friends. They sit together like after the COVID is not possible maybe. We are not going office, but at least we should go office, co contribute, collaborate with each other. Okay, yeah. So like the first step is supportive language. Always support your tester or developer. Okay, so like uh, take example if uh, if tester is find some last minute bugs. Okay, so don't blame them. Uh, w what are you doing, man? Why you didn't find in the starting? Why you are coming in the end? At least thanks them. At least we we find that bug before the production. Or or if the customer come up with that bug, it it will create a negative impact. So always support them. Second way and uh, uh, okay and one of uh, James Best there is a testing guru who tell always like tester don't hate developers. And it's like a means the wife tell to her husband before going out if there is some strain on his shirt, so he will not feel embarrassed. Something like that. So developer and tester roles should be productive, should be friends. They know each other. They they know their strength and weaknesses. Or take example one more like if the tester is not able to reproduce an issue, but help them to reproduce the issue. Give some uh, system logs because as a developer we know what are the input. Uh, if we provide that input, maybe it reproduce the issue. So provide that info information so that they, they find the issue and they can log the issue. Okay, so uh, second one is defect triage meeting. So we follow this like every week. Uh, the test, the bugs will come from any places like that. The tester, from developer, from multiple players, from customer also. So every week we do one meeting. In that meeting, we discuss oh, what is the priority, either it's a bug or not, or what are the solution. The basic things we just provide that in the in the ticket also and the story points also like the defect uh, difficulty level of that bugs. And the code freeze, it's very important guys. Uh, like uh, means uh, if we, like tester is like tester is a human. He, he don't test each and every part uh, of the app. Okay, so if we are pushing our code till the end, like we have the production which tomorrow and we are pushing our code till now, then how the tester will test each and every part because they need to test a regression like each and every part. Like uh, right now we have the automation, we can do it, but still we need to do some manual testing also. And uh, uh, like what we follow is uh, we have the three, uh, like every four week we do our production push. So three week we are pushing our changes to the, uh, pushing our changes in the testing environment. Last week we give full week to the tester to test each and every part. But uh, we give like if they find any critical issue, just we, uh, we fix that issue and push on the <laughs> testing environment. Apart from this, full week we give to the tester to do it. And next one is the resource alignment. Like in IT world, uh, resource, Align, uh, resource currency is very normal. Like uh, somebody is joining the company, somebody is leaving the company, okay. And the, the most standard ratio for developer and tester is uh, like three ratio one, or as per the product, as per the, their experience. But mostly this is the standard ratio. So sometime if there's some resource crunch, so always like uh, as a tester push, uh, as a developer push less code in the production or in the testing environment so that they will uh, get the time to test the things or uh, like help them like as a developer we can test uh, other developer code or the second one is also test our code. So we are also follow these things. Sometime is uh, the, we have the little bit crunch in the resource. So as a part of resource alignment, I would also like to add uh, the resource balance in the both development QE ratio is very important. Why? Because of like, if we don't have a balanced team, like for example, we have five, QE, five QEs on one developer. 
not not good right and on the other, like vice versa five developers one qe there are a lot of pressure there are a lot of pressure to work on the things so being a like as a qe manager i always sit together with the project team and decide like how the ratio should be so when, when we are talking about the industry ratio about the dev versus qe it should be like either three ratio one and two ratio one depending on the uh, the project the complexity of the project the timelines and the like what we uh, committed to our stakeholders so always like don't go to your manager uh, we don't we have a crunch and just we need to help uh, like manager can't, can't do anything right we have the crunch so we have the we need to manage ourselves okay and the pair program and testing uh, like i follow this one like i always try to share my knowledge architecture knowledge with the tester because if we share our knowledge definitely they will not come with the small small bugs like the data issue or some uh, like the if some field is not showing in the ui then they they will not come to us they analyze from their own self if we share our knowledge with them or uh, like uh, they can directly ping to the backend team i am not able to see this field please take a look so it save a lot of time between developer and testers yeah so now we have seen like how we will solve these problems now uh, at what time the developer and tester collaborate more uh, each other okay so like the shift left testing and uh, in the shift left testing like always try to involve the tester in the initial phase uh, in the initial phase so that like uh, once the requirement uh, comes so uh, we 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 analyze we figure out okay how we will deliver that product so at that time if we if we involve our tester then like tester is feel like a customer okay they think like a customer how the test how the customer will use this product so in this way if they provide their suggestion then as a developer when we are designing our architecture then they they, they share our knowledge okay and we we use their knowledge we use their use cases while designing the product or while designing any feature so it helps like and if we are thinking like all the scenario in the starting then it will definitely will help help us to grow in the future also if the new things come and defect reporting and resolution uh, is a normal thing like always developer say i'm not able to reproduce this issue so like when the tester is reporting the bug then definitely provide all the things like attach the video attach the screenshot provide the proper steps so that like when that when the developer start working on this he has some information okay so i need to do 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 these things and it, i'm able to reproduce this issue at least he will not come to the tester oh man i am not able to reproduce this issue what can i do with that so it it save a lot of time between developer and tester okay so next one is resolution uh, recognition and appreciation so like uh, in red hat we always uh, recognize anybody if somebody help us like in red hat we give some reward points some and thank you note so that he uh, like so the next person will feel uh, satisfied like he help us and we recognize him something like that yeah yeah so now uh, we will going to discuss about the different case studies so before i will discuss the case study i would just like to call like these case studies are the result we are actually actively these are the real time scenarios which we are actually using in our teams with the help and collaboration uh, from like a development team along with the program team so so the first one is okay the first one is implementing a ci cd pipeline which result improving the software quality so um, uh, i will going to as a part of this case study i will going to discuss like how these two roles actually helps like how the tester can help the development team uh, during the development phase so the first one is like you can see like how usually developers works so developer build the work they were they usually work on the uh, requirements they build and uh, before so how the team testers can contribute uh, during the building or during the development phase uh, with programmers they can like add a uh, automation suit so automation suit is nothing but it's a smoke suit which give us a confidence like the basic functionality or basic critical functionality of the software is working fine so what we will do we will here like uh, when the developer is building their code before like merging it the master branch at that time we will uh, integrate our automation suit with the unit test so along with the unit test our automation suit will going to run if it's working fine like the basic functionality which we added in the suit is working fine it will ready to go with the mer uh, merge request otherwise it will detect the problem and share the report with the developer 
developer so that in the early phase developer can take a look what are the problem or the, you can consider what are the regression with this new change and it will be also solve the time tested they no need to like much worry about the basic scenario because we have already tested as a part of the building process so the next one which we have is like cross functional collaboration for comprehensive testing so comprehensive testing is very important why because um, uh, we we uh, in agile module like we we do uh, like quick changes move that changes to the production so how we can uh, achieve cross functional collaboration so we usually conduct the bug bash so bug bash is the event where like we in, uh, invite different teams uh, different representatives from the development team program team as well as different QE teams. So they keep their normal, uh, they set aside their normal uh, jobs uh, for some time and they start testing on a piece of the thing which we are planned to release. So for that, we can take an example of um, an e-commerce site which are, they are planning to release a major, uh, uh, major changes in the production. So we will conduct a uh, bug bash event where we are like a representative from the development team, QE team come together and doing random testing to make sure that like to find the bugs or uh, testing different scenario, for example, uh, shopping cart workflow, payment workflow to make sure that like we uh, like give a uh, cover all the scenarios related to the UIT. So uh, at the end of this event, what we will do, we will call out few winners on the basis of the defect quality, their severity, and like um, and the details which they have shared. So it could be like you can every organization have some mechanism to appreciate their results. It could be rewards points, it could be some gifts. So this is how you can encourage the cross-functional collaboration. So the next uh, uh, the next case study we have is about the actively participation of feedback loop, uh, like how you can involve tester in during the feedback loop. So customer satisfaction is very, very important when it comes to the software development. And if we act on the customer feedback on timely basis, we can increase the overall customer satisfaction as well as the product qu quality. And as you know, testers, QEs are known as a customer advocate. And if we are involving them, it will definitely will going to have a very good impact uh, uh, on the like, as a feedback. So uh, let's say here, let's take example. Every team, every software had their different mechanism to gather the customer feedback. It could be an email directly. It could be a form attached on the system. It could be a t account TAM who helping who connects with the customer and di customer directly share the details. So we gather all the feedback in a one place. And we usually have a monthly based uh, meetings where we discuss the overall the feedback which we receive. Now, on the basis of like then developers and testers both contribute and share like what are the things which you need to prioritize. So we log the tickets in our ticketing mechanism and testers start working on it. On the, on the parallel side, uh, development will going to work on the fixing the things and testers will start working on the test plan. And then they will deploy a test and inform the uh, customer like, okay, these are the feedback we receive and we fix this and now it's ready to use. So this is how tester can also contribute as a part of feedback loop. So I'll hand over to Anuj to talk about the overall development and build up. Okay, so Nancy has said like all the three principle which we follow. Guys, if you are not follow, try to follow these things. Like the CI, CD, it's very important like uh, means before pushing our code changes we we try to uh, like test the thing so it will not create a regression so we follow this same feedback loop is very important we follow these things okay so now uh, now we will discuss like how we deploy build and deploy the features okay so this is a full diagram i try to make and try to explain you guys so how we are doing uh, so how we are involving different people like the tester developer ux engineer or the pm level okay so the, like the first one is requirement so requirement come from many places PM level and analytics level or the customer okay so after that like we we analyze the requirements so in that in that like uh, the all the team members like who are tester developer uh, UX engineer or the PM level managers everybody is there so in that we decide okay either we need to do these things or not okay we are doing these things then what are the priority of that or how the customer will use these features so the tester is giving their suggestion they think like a customer and then uh, like as a developer we think okay so either it's possible or not or the backend team also decide okay so how we will deliver or how we will give to the ui this some if we need some backend support or some 
data from the backend. So in this way, like we we analyze each and every part. So once we figure out, okay, then we go for the build, build the feature. The UX will give us the UX design, and then we build the feature. And after that, uh, we we like the tester test the things and. Like in the testing phase, we are also helping the uh, as a developer. We also help the tester to test the things, share our knowledge, and then after that, like the customer demo. So after that, like before going to the production, we give the customer demo, and like if it's a critical uh, feature or the new feature, we give some UAT. Uh, like some give some pre-prod environments and give some URL so that they can do some UAT testing and then after that like deploy the features and uh, we continuously take a feedback from the customer. It's very important. So like in this way, like we try to build our product and uh, try to build the quality and improve the quality and all things. We follow this role. Okay, so uh, guys, like these are the couple of suggestions uh, from from our side to to all. Okay, so uh, try to build a network uh, with all the tester and developer. Uh, means try to go for offline meetup. Try to go for conferences. Like I'm here, so I meet a lot of people. Uh, like in in this way, like we we get to know okay how the people uh, other people are using the technology, different products and all things. Uh, so uh, continuous learning, like it's a very difficult. Uh, like as a, I'm a front end developer, everything every day coming new things. The new library come, like uh, there are a lot of framework in the UI. So uh, it's very difficult to learn the new things or continuously learning. But try to update whatever tool you are using. Try to things. Okay, maybe uh, uh, means try to uh, the new feature is come. Try to think about okay the new feature come. Learn the new things. So it's always like uh, always try to update yourself. And be kind in stress. So, like in IT, the stress out is a normal thing, right? So we have a lot of works to do, and but try to come out, uh, take a break. It's always a good thing. Don't don't starting blaming. Just uh, take a break. It's a best thing. Or uh, take a feedback in a positive way. I always follow these things, so I try to take a feedback from multiple people. If somebody give you the negative feedback, take it as a positive because uh, thanks them. At least he gives he gave you the negative feedback and he finds something bad in you. Try to improve that, and definitely in the end you will you will feel yourself as a positive way. Uh, yeah, make personal brand. Uh, like uh, means I follow this rule. Uh, means try to write a blogs. Like I try to educate. Uh, try to educate via YouTube. Um, so related to web web development, but uh, means try to do these things and uh, means it help it help you if it helps a lot uh, means definitely. Okay, so so with that this quote we will wrap up our talk. So the quote means that testers and programmers should work together rather than or instead of like competing with each other by sharing and collaborating their knowledge their skills they can create a better and productive or good produ product so thank you thank you any questions Okay, so the question is like how how you are maintaining the uh, quality while while pushing the changes right yes. on the QA. Yes. Okay, so like uh, this is diagram. If you see here, what we are doing is when we are merging our changes. Okay, when we are create our MR. Okay, so in that time, once build the code, everything is fine. Then we run this unit test and the automation test. So tester give us one URL like. Tests are also doing like running their automation test, right? So in the GitLab, we are also running their unit test on our uh, GitLab. So in this way, like suppose you have make one button change, okay? So it we, we are hundred percent sure it this button will not uh, create any regression at least in the existing or the critical functionality or the unit test. We are also follow this rule like. Every every time we try to write the unit test, otherwise we don't merge any code. So this is like we follow this rule, and in this way, like 
once everything like at least the existing functionality is working fine then we go for the merge request and then deploy it to the testing environment and then tester will also do their own testing manual or whatever they want to do and after that we go for the production so this is this is way like we follow and if you see here in the red sign a problem detected in the unit test like if there's some issue in the while running our changes then we go to the the developer will take a look it's either because of me or there is some issue in the other unit test or the automation test so we connect with the tester and in this way like we follow this one so as of like in this section like you know like when we execute our automation run right we do have some report which explain like what are the things is not going well so developers can take a look because we have already shared all the workflow and all the framework with them uh, along with their like integration with the unit uh, test report Okay, the question here is like how we uh, spread this collaboration across time because there are high, high chances there are teams which not following this, right? So, uh, you know, like we usually have a flow where we have a QE team Q or development team and programming team. So we usually have one monthly or uh, like monthly or like uh, twice in a quarterly meetings with the leads. So over there, we usually have a bi-directional discussion and feedback on the QE team as well as development. So like as a QE manager, I have one-on-one -on -one with my team members right to see if there are they do have any feedback for the developers because they're open to share like they can share the feedback if they are facing any challenges so they discuss with me and because I don't want like their developers and queues directly have some some relationship conflicts so I act as a manager act as a moderator and they connect with the development manager as well as program manager to make sure like this is what we are facing like how we can fix how we can fill this gap and vice versa if development manager have any feedback like okay we have a resource crunch or last release we got a, a critical bug on production so how we can like improve this in a better way so being a leader so we discuss internally and make sure that like it should be a bi-directional call so we usually keep like I usually follow the monthly connect why because we usually have you follow the agile and uh, or Kanban which has uh, like three three weeks sprint or two weeks sprint so this is how we usually work and uh, second way like we have the retrospective meeting okay so if something is not going good so we discuss in the in that retrospective and discuss like provide some points and action item also we follow that okay so we will take care in the next time okay so like first time mistake is a normal thing but if you are repeating the things that's a bad thing so try so the retrospective is a good thing and we have the weekly grooming meeting daily stand up so we follow this thing so and at least like we are maintaining the quality and all things. Yeah. So if you also have to, anyone else? I think you were raising your hand. Okay. Anyone in the back? Anyone, any other question? Okay, so I'll give my, I will share my experience, maybe Anuj will share. So the question here is like how we can uh, encourage peer programming or peer testing. So I'll give you a few years back, uh, me and Anuj were in one team and uh, just like before the release, I found very critical bug. And um, when I found like, it's like two, uh, two I think next, uh, within a few hours we were supposed to really, I was just doing the smoke testing. And when I informed uh, uh, Anuj, Anuj said, okay, Nancy, come, come at my desk. I'll show you what is going on. So he explained me the code like Nancy, and, and he told me like, Nancy, you sit and you fix it. I was like, how I can fix it? That's your job. <laughs> so he said like, it's just a mistake of full stop. You just, we missed that. That is why it's a blocker is coming. So I sit on his desk, he explained me the whole code and I fix that bug. So this is how you can encourage. So if it's coming, like if developers should like explain like how, there are very small, small tips, like uh, we also encourage 
that culture in a team, like they explain like how the console and how the network lo logs tester can understand, right? So because if there something is failing without directly logging a bo uh, sorry bug, what we usually do, which firstly check console, is there any errors going on? Is there any, what's the network logs? There, because there may be a chance it could be a uh, internet intermittent issue, right? It's uh, you have a like network connection problem that is why it's failing. So just like learning these things and collaborating with developers. It helps a lot, so yeah. Okay, so I follow this thing like I always share my knowledge. Okay, so somebody tester come up, I'm not able to see this field. I t I ask him, uh, have you think about this? Why why you are not able to see these things? So have you checked the network call or uh, have you are you getting any console error? So he think like this, and then I explain him. Okay, we are doing some these 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 things, and that's why you are getting this issue. So at least in the future he will not come up with the same question. And the second way we follow uh, we like every month we have the one guilt meeting. So in that meeting, like everybody share their own experience. So like something he if somebody did something good, so like. Uh, uh, in that meeting, he explained, okay, I did these things, and everybody is in that meeting, like the developer, tester. So this is also the second way we follow these things. And the third way, uh, we try to, uh, like, uh, automation test, right? So we help them. Uh, maybe I have some bandwidth, uh, one day or five hours, 10 hours, then we told them, okay, could you please give us one automation test? Maybe I help you. Or we review their code also. They review um, our code, but uh, sometimes they are not able to do, but uh, we ask them, okay, is there any scenario is pending from our side? So we can write the unit test for that, so that it will not come up with the, because they think like a customer, they have a lot of scenario, we don't think like that, right? And uh, in this way, like always help them to decide the infra framework, which framework is good, and what what are the benefits if you are doing these these things, best practices. There are a lot of things like we follow. Uh, this is just my suggestion, guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>